Hello and welcome to another lecture on our way to understanding the role of semiconductors in electronic devices and specifically their use in integrated circuits. In this video, I'll explain the Fermi level shift when current passes through a semiconductor and how it shifts differently for electrons and holes, resulting in Fermi levels that are commonly referred to as quasi-Fermi levels. Now that we're injecting current into a semiconductor and taking it out of equilibrium, we need to talk about the Fermi level. It changes because of that. It changes differently for the N and the P-type. We're going to talk about the quasi-Fermi levels. E sub Fn is the quasi-Fermi level for electrons, and E sub Fp is the quasi-Fermi level for holes. Kind of the way I look at them is, it's the Fermi level that electrons sees, and it's the Fermi level that holes see. They don't see the same Fermi level. From a more practical point of view, you can think of them as whatever they need to be to make the two most important equations in the book still work. So equations 185 and 188 need to be modified slightly by putting the subscript N and P in here to indicate quasi-Fermi level. And so we need to talk about how you might get those values instead of the, the actual Fermi level. And now in the case of majority carriers, it, it won't change. So if I have an N-type semiconductor, the Fermi energy that the electron sees is the actual Fermi energy. And if I have a p-type, the Fermi energy that the hole sees is the actual Fermi energy. So you might draw your energy level diagram like this. You have the quasi-Fermi level for an n-type. Electrons are the majority carrier, so for holes, the minority carrier, they have their own quasi-Fermi level. But electrons have the actual Fermi level as their quasi-Fermi level. And same for p-type. The minority electrons now have their own quasi-Fermi level. So let's look at a p-n junction where we have one of each type. And I'm going to bias this p-n junction, forward bias it. But that is the positive term of the battery is hooked up to the p-type terminal. Just to remind us what that means, you know, what happens to all these holes in the p-type side when a positive voltage is placed over here? Well, they get chased over to the n side, right? And all the negative electrons get chased over to the p-side. And so you're able to have current flowing around this loop uh, clockwise. The energy levels also are different in a junction than in a single semiconductor. Do you remember when we connected an N and a P together, the conduction band edge was different on one side than the other, and it's lower on the N side and higher on the P side, and then the same for the valence band, but the, the gap is preserved. When you bias it, forward bias it in this case, the step size gets smaller by the amount of voltage. Uh, it gets smaller. Finally, though, the, the Fermi energy is going to change. If you don't bias it, the Fermi energy on the N side will be just determined by the equilibrium carrier concentrations, and on the P side, determined by the equilibrium carrier concentrations. But you know, it's different when, when you go and bias it. Now, everything's going to shift around. And so let's look at how that shifting occurs. Now you have, on the N side, the minority holes get their own Fermi level. And on the P side, the minority electrons get their own Fermi level. Fermi levels split by charge carrier type on the two sides. Also, you know, there's a distance over which the N side Fermi level and the P side Fermi level lines do connect. And you might even imagine a curve that just follows the contour of the conduction band edge uh, making that connection. But it's not really something you can actually draw because quasi-Fermi level loses its meaning when you don't have a very strong majority. The majority carrier concentration has to be much, much larger than the minority carrier concentration. So as you get near this line here, you have equal amounts of each. It really loses its meaning, so things get sort of fuzzy. But there's the distance over which this transition occurs. It's called the diffusion length. And there's a certain amount of diffusion length in the N side and a certain amount in the P side. We are given by these expressions, so L sub N is the diffusion length on the P side. It's given by the square root of the electron diffusion coefficient times the recombination time. And on the N side, it's the whole diffusion coefficient times the, the diffusion time. They're not guaranteed to be the equal because the electrons and holes have different diffusion coefficients. We have different diffusion lengths on either side, but we're going to take advantage of that fact in the design of PN junction devices. This is going to be really useful in optoelectronics. Let's try a problem. I'll let you read it. 
So you take silicon and dope it with acceptor ions to 10 to the 17th per cubic centimeter. Okay, so let's find the quasi-Fermi levels at this point. So you've done, you've injected enough current that the excess carriers are 8 times 10 to the 14th per cubic centimeter. One thing I would emphasize is that the number of excess electrons and the number of excess holes are always equal. That's charge neutrality that dictates that. So you can always count on that. It's a useful thing to keep in mind and simplify your thinking with. How do I know it's 8 times 10 to the 14th? I don't. It's a given. Okay, so whatever current was injected in was enough to make that happen. Let's uh, begin, just to, as I say, to preserve our sanity, let's calculate carrier concentrations at equilibrium. Given this doping level, 10 to the 17th, the whole carrier concentration is 10 to the 17th. So, you know, we can also then calculate the how high above the valence band edge you'll find the Fermi energy in our equilibrium semiconductor. In other words, we haven't turned on injection current yet. It's just not on yet. N sub V is 1.84 times 10 to the 19. So you get that the Fermi energy is 0.136 electron volts above the valence band. I, I say save this. Apparently it's going to be needed. And we can also calculate the electron carrier concentration from the equilibrium condition. Okay, because I'm just asking for the moment what's going on at equilibrium. Look at that, you get a thousand. N sub I is always 10 to the 10th for silicon. So you get a thousand per cubic centimeter. It's a lot, 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 lot smaller than the whole carrier concentration. You, you could calculate the, the Fermi energy relative to the conduction band and you get 0.984 if you wanted to, but uh, just use 1.12 minus 0.136 to get 0.984. So that's what the energy band levels are, the energy band diagram, before we've begun injecting this excess carriers. The Fermi energy is the quasi-Fermi energy for holes and electrons. So in other words, you can forget about even indicating that it's not important until you turn on the carriers. So once we start injecting the current, now we have this excess carrier concentration. Now we can calculate new Fermi levels. First of all, let's look at the holes. How many holes per cubic centimeter will we have now? We had 1 times 10 to the 17th. Now we're adding 8 times 10 to the 14th. So we really don't change the whole concentration at all. I mean, it's mildly perturbed. The whole concentration remains 1 times 10 to the 17th per cubic centimeter, which means the Fermi level, as far as holes are concerned, didn't change because you're not changing the carrier concentration. You're not going to change what you calculate for the Fermi energy. So the quasi-Fermi energy for holes is just the Fermi energy. The carrier density doesn't change, the Fermi energy doesn't change. However, for electrons, different, a different story. Equilibrium was 1,000 per cubic centimeter. Now we're adding 8 times 10 to the 14th per cubic centimeter. That's 8 times 10 to the 14th. So now we have a totally different electron carrier concentration, which means we'll find a different Fermi level using that. And the Fermi level that we get using that carrier concentration is 0.27 eV below the conduction band edge. So if I made an energy level diagram, it would have to look like this. Uh, the holes think that the Fermi energy is 0.136 eV above the valence band. The electrons think it's 0.27 eV below the conduction band, and they're both right. That's the energy level diagram for this situation. As you start to turn the voltage down, on the, the bias voltage, you reduce that bias voltage, this dashed line for the E sub Fn, this dashed line drops, starts to keep dropping. And when the bias voltage reaches zero, this dashed line meets up with the Fermi energy. And that's why the equilibrium semiconductor, where you're injecting no current, there's only the Fermi energy. Okay, we will stop with that and uh, carry on with the next one.